Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Today we will have a presentation on the a few must-see cases for primary and junior residents. I think everyone will be helped, yani helped by these cases because they are uh, common, they are important, you must know, you must diagnose as fast as possible and as accurately as possible. So let's start with uh, Lena. We'll, we'll go like this, okay? So can you tell why this patient is short of breath? You have this, you are sitting in the emergency room on call, doing nothing, playing with the Snapchat and uh, I don't know what. And they give you this chest x-ray. This patient is, has acute or severe shortness of breath. What do you think? Don't think too much. What? Yeah, it's spot diagnosis, yes. Collapse. Collapse of what? Huh? Right lung collapse. Right lung collapse. And would right lung collapse cause acute shortness of breath? <coughs> Till now you are okay, you are going on the right track. But you are missing a little something that makes it an emergency. Guys, I'm going to just a little presentation. Just warm up case. When you see a lung collapse, you look for signs of what? What do you mean by lung collapse? Any consolidation? Any infection? Obstruction of airway. Obstruction of airway cause collapse or might cause hyperinflation. Okay, so do we have collapse or hyperinflation? To me, it's collapse. To you, it's collapse. So, hypertranslucency of that means what? Mid and lower, okay. Zone. Okay. Yes. Compare with the left side. <coughs> what do you, what's, there are lung markings here. Yes. Yes, but lung there are no, no lung markings. So this means what? Lack of lung markings means what? Guys, please. Rajaani. Lack of lung markings. You have a line, dense line. Here there is dense lung and here there are no lung, lung markings this is lung this is lung tissue yes. and what about this air so means what pneumothorax. pneumothorax so when you see pneumothorax you need to look for what after you saw pneumothorax pneumothorax is managed conservatively you send the patient home but this is an acute case he's in the emergency you look for what After pneumothorax, you look for any signs of mediastinal deviation. Why? To exclude what? To exclude tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax is final, is, is, is fatal. Pneumothorax is not, okay? So you look for any signs of tension, because if it's tension pneumothorax, just that you must be inserted immediately. Okay? So, is there any signs of tension pneumothorax? This mediastinum is normally located? Or is it shifted? Shifted. So this is a tension pneumothorax. Okay? That's the diagnosis of tension pneumothorax. And if you can see, on the, this is, in fact, tension pneumothorax, most of the time, it is a clinical diagnosis. They rarely, rarely make it, make it to the radiology department. Usually, they diagnose it in the emergency room, and they treat it in the emergency room. So it's very rarely that you see an X-ray with tension pneumothorax. You cannot miss it. It is a fatal mistake to miss a tension pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, okay. No, you can sometimes. we suppose supposed not to miss it, but if you missed it, it's not a big deal. But tension pneumothorax, it is a big deal to miss, okay? 
So you can, there is a shift of the heart and the trachea to the other side, and this has no lung markings. The lung is completely collapsed, indicating attention pneumothorax. On the CT scan, you can see this is lying on his back, so the air is superiorly, okay, located at the anterior chest wall, okay? Now, yalla, she now. This person developed chest pain after vomiting. Why? Forceful vomiting, severe vomiting. Okay. Left lung field. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why the chest pain after vomiting? You can see there are some streaky lines of air here. See this? Okay. You can see this line here. What is this line and these streaky hypodensities? Pneumomediastinum. The patient had vomiting. Why would he have pneumomediastinum? Guys. Huh? واحد عنده vomiting ماكل لفة فلافل ومتسمم وصار عنده vomiting ليش يصير عنده pneumomediastinum؟ Exactly, good job. This is excessive vomiting can lead to tear in the esophagus resulting in uh, air in the mediastinum or pneumomediastinum. Okay, you can see this is the pericardium lifted off the heart by air. It happens after, the usually the patients are have repeated attacks of vomiting. It's not once, okay, especially in Jamaat al bulimia They vomit themselves for weight loss or anorexia or high So, exactly, Borhev syndrome. So you can see this air outside the esophagus, okay? And when patient drinks contrast, it is leaked out of the esophagus due to rupture esophagus, okay? Yes, it is emergency. So these are very important things you cannot miss. Simple, common, not common, but when it comes, you have to know it. Get it? Zip. نفس ال IV iodine. متل any suspicion of rupture anywhere in the GIT barium is one hundred percent contraindicated. يعني omnipec treated خلطة كل سادة كيفك تمام. So Maria, يلا ماريا خلينا نشوف. Why does this patient have abdominal pain? Straightforward. Exactly. Nemoperitoneum. He has nemoperitoneum. What does that indicate? Yani if he has nemoperitoneum, so what? Why the nemoperitoneum? From where? Don't, it's not in the image. Tell me the causes of pneumoperitoneum. Maria? Off the image. Bye. Causes of pneumoperitoneum. Perforated bowel. Exactly. Perforated viscous, first. Second, <coughs> recent surgery. Recent surgery. You have pneumoperitoneum, but it's not pathological. It's normal to have pneumoperitoneum after surgery. Okay, but perforated bowel and the lack of surgery, you look for gastric ulcer perforation, peptic ulcer perforation, most commonly, and either traumatic means so look for something else. Yeah, okay, either traumatic. La chiloditis syndrome is anatomical variant. It's not pneumoperitoneum. You can't see bowel between diaphragm and liver, but it's not pneumoperitoneum. Okay. Good. So, you can see air underlying the diaphragm, and this is the liver, this is the, di the diaphragm, okay? And you can see the undersurface of the left hemidiaphragm, also outlined, okay? 
uh, and you can see both sides of the wall of the stomach the outer wall will inner wall and this means that's air outside the bowel and inside the bowel it's the regular side exactly okay so this and you can do a CT scan you can see these are two different patients you can see free air can be small can be huge okay and it's not in the bowel zero yalla hana <clears throat> this is a 57 year old female with shortness of breath why Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. So there is bilateral pleural effusion, exactly, and you can see the meniscus shape of the pleural effusion bilaterally. And if you put her in the supine position, you will have layering of the pleural effusion. The, the the lung field will be hazy is a more veil sign veil اللي هو شنو الفيل veil الحجاب okay من واحدة حاطة الحجاب على نزلتها على صدرها okay veil sign يعني مغطي كل الموضوع okay فمن ينام ال air اللي sorry the fluid will be flattened making or يعني the lung field L defined. You, you won't see the meniscus sign. Okay. Again, on the CT scan, you can see this is the pleural effusion. And the surprising thing that I have noticed from my practice personally, bill pleural effusion or bill peritoneal effusion, bill ascites. Whatever you estimate the amount of fluid, it will be much more, at least double. For example, of the Physician ask you how much would be by your estimation? Say maybe two three liters. It will be four five six liters. It's it's good. Ma tqadr, rah yitla akthar. It's good. Tqadr. Hada pleural effusion. Allah yitla ala litrain. So we litrain it will be four. So, يعني يعني this this might be like three four liters. Hada pleural effusion. Okay. And keep in mind, you need about 300 cc to see blunting of the cost of neck angle. Yani, if the best cost of neck angle, best blunted, best each tiny blunt, you are talking about 300 cc. So it is significant. Mu, yani, best blunting. No, it's there are a good amount of fluid. Shon any? Yeah, by ultrasound would be, uh, you can detect even much less, uh, I'm talking about x-ray, chest x-ray. Okay. Mm, can be, we need to see more images and we measure the cardiothoracic ratio. Zin. Yeah, Dr. Berjak. This patient has atrial fibrillation and a heart murmur. What's your diagnosis? Okay. And it will go with the congestive heart failure. Because Good. What is the... As uh, playing of the carina. What about the lung markings, the pulmonary markings? Increased or decreased? Yes, no, increased. Uh, it is... Uh, increased yes. centrally. Yes. What, what about peripherally? Upward. Okay. You can see the central ones are prominent. While peripherally, it is very unremarkable, let's say. Okay? So, when you see pruning of the pulmonary vessels, what does that indicate? Pulmonary venous hypertension. Okay? And this case has a heart, heart murmur due to mitral stenosis. So, the patient had a mitral stenosis, okay? And the size, not the number of the vessel of the up exceeds the one in the base, okay, liver civilization, like you said. So this is very typical of uh, pulmonary venous hypertension. You can see, compare the up, the vessels, with the low vessels. It is very unobvious here, okay. So the arteries too, I think, somewhat enlarged in the 
pulmonary artery. Uh, it's a mitral stenosis, so you should supposed to be, I don't know. Anyway, so this, when you see this civilization with the pruning of the peripheral vessels, it's due to pul primary pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary venous hypertension, okay? Again, uh, you can see here there is pulmonary, this is edema, pulmonary edema. You can see this ground glass, cotton-like opacities bilaterally, both lungs, okay? While this is interstitial edema, this, uh, you can see the curly B lines. I know the image is a little bit small and not very obvious. Unfortunately, I, I should put another better image here. But anyway, it's an interstitial edema, okay? Yalla, Omar. أسهل منها هيك ماكو يعني سبوت والله والله 63 year old man with chest pain why one diagnosis single shot huh dissection exactly there is an aortic or intimal flap you can see this is the flap resulting in two lumens true lumen and false lumen due to dissection okay which one true the one with the dense contrast الدنس أكثر هو التو الدياميتر يجولي الفولس هو الأكبر يكون يجولي فولس the false dim lumen is larger okay and the thing is what is the presenting complaint of aortic dissection مريض شو يقول لك what kind of chest pain what kind stabbing or shearing يعني واحد دي مزعة بالنص okay and of course you know the uh, classification for aortic dissection. We have Stanford, you have? Stanford and uh, D-Bank. Uh, okay. Demo. So you can see here there is uh, the X-ray. Of course, this is widened mediastinum and some pleural effusion. And when you see this, you should at least suspect possible uh, aortic dissection. Okay. And this is the classification we will not go into this now Nurja. Hana. 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 why did this 85 year old have abrupt onset of abdominal pain very easy don't think too much he's an 85 year old guy having sudden onset of abdominal pain why What's the image? What is the exam? CT abdomen. CT abdomen. With contrast or without contrast? With contrast. With contrast. IV low oral? IV. IV contrast. Okay. So everything that is opacified is a vessel. Okay? So, why? This is the aorta, right? Yes. What, does it look good, normal to you or not? What? There is aneurysmal dilatation. Exactly. There is a big aneurysm of the aorta. What is this thick something? Rupture. What is this thick something? Uh, this, thickening. Lumen. this is the lumen. The lumen contains the contrast. Yeah. This does not contain contrast. What is this? When you see an aneurysm, you look for? Rupture. Clot. Yes. Intimal clot. Okay. And when you have an atheroma or clot or whatever, then you look with sudden onset pain, you look for this. What's this? This and this and this. It's contrast. That is where? Outside the artery. So we give an IV contrast. Why it's outside? Ruptured aneurysm. Exactly. This is a ruptured aneurysm with blood leaking everywhere or around it indicating it's an acute case and in an 85 year old probably fatal okay so you can see the active extravasation of contrast <coughs> from the aorta into the retroperitoneum and this is the thrombus okay what are the criteria for ruptured aortic aneurysm? You see a large amount of abdominal aorta more than three centimeter, indicating an aneurysm formation. Usually, usually it is due to secondary to atherosclerosis. 
between renal arteries and LEX. Up to 25% they rupture, okay? Aorta is on the left side, so usually the bleeding or the extravasation occurs more on the left side. If it is into the GI tract, there will be massive hemorrhage. Into the IVC, it will be rapid cardiac decompensation. What do we mean by rapid cardiac decompensation? Or acute heart failure. Severe acute heart failure. Okay? Tamam. Nasiao. 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 First, second, third. First. Yeah, I'm skinny. Yeah, extra yet. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that much von Hippolyndo syndrome. For example, bleeding. Yeah, I'm an AR. Zin. Yeah. We're not going to have a first to second. For example, you say the details are from the bad side. Okay. No difference. Yeah, guys. So, newborn with tachypnea. Why? Okay. Multiple uh, um, dyslexy on the left side. Mm -hmm. The shifting of the uh, with the spine to the right side. Good. Uh, shifting to diaphragmatic hernia. Diaphragmatic hernia, exactly. Excellent. Let's go on first to Madrid. You know, So you can see the left hemithorax contains multiple lucencies of the bowel located in the chest. Okay. At the beginning, our mind will it, it is the hemithorax will be opaque. You know, there is no air in the bowel. Give it time, the bowel will start containing gases and it will be more radiolucent. And you can see paucity of the bowel loops below the diaphragm. There is little bowel loops, okay? Now, uh, what's this? Let's see. منو هسه؟ ها؟ هاتاو يلا. اوكي. هاتاو، وان كوستشن، واتس ذا ديفرنس بين ذيس ايمج وذيس ايمج؟ اي كانت بي مور بيسك ذان ذات، بيسك بيسك كيست. She's a big stream. <laughs> What's the difference between this image and this image? Yeah. erect? So this is an erect one, or well, this is supine. Why? 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 ما دا سأل دا سأل السبيكر. عفية. Air fluid levels you see it in erect position. You don't see it in supine position. In supine position they use it to see mainly the diameter of the bowel loops, not the air fluid level. So this is a case of what? Small or large? The air fluid levels are distributed centrally or peripherally, or both? Centrally. Centrally or peripherally, or both? Both. Both. No, I should centrally. Okay? If it is small bowel obstruction, you'll see centrally. If it is large bowel obstruction, you can see either peripherally or both. Either large bowel. Why? If you see it just peripherally, this is large bowel obstruction with, you know, Afia, with competent ileocecal valve. If the ileocecal valve is incompetent, you will see center, peripherally and centrally. Okay, so you can see there is multiple air fluid level levels in the small bowel, indicating small bowel obstruction. Okay, yeah, let me run. لا 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 الإليوسيكال فالف some people have competent إليوسيكال فالف some people have not competent it's not pathological it's not pathological okay يعني هاي الله خالقين okay 
زين ميران 83 year old with distended abdomen what's your diagnosis هم. لاحظ 80 year old 83 year old he's an elderly guy okay he has a distended abdomen acutely distended what do you see Well, this is the transverse column. It looks good to me. It's not distended. What about this thing here? What's this? Yalla, chauru binatkum. Sir, valvulus. Which kind of valvulus? طبعا يعني هم الكل جابوا واخر واحد لاحظ اوبوزيت او تو تو وات بس من يجي هو السنة اي والله يصفر اي بس شو وقت تطلع العضلات قدام غيره زين سو سيجمويد فولفولوس تويست اراوند اتس بوينت ريزالتينج ان يعني فولفولوس اوف ذا سيجمويد كولون وات وات ار ذا ساينز ذات يو سي هير كوفي بين ساين واحد اثنين You see it covering the, so the liver, and you see it above T12 level. Okay? Organoaxial, that's the gastric valvulus. No. Organoaxial organ. That's the gastric valvulus. We are talking about sig sigmoid valvulus. Totally different. Shinzentrin. 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 شوف هسه هذا بالباريوم انيما يو كان سي ذا سايت اوف تويست اوكي هاويفر اي وود نيفر دو ا باريوم انيما اون ا فالفولوس بيكوز اف ذيرز ا بيرفوريشن فيري باد اي وود دو ووتر سوليبل كونتراست ايوداين اوكي اجين يو كان سي ذا دايليتد لوبس ان ذا ليفت ابر كوادرانت ويتش هاز تويستد اون ات سيلف اند سم سمول باول دايليتد ات ذا كلوز تو ذا ايليوسيكال بار تمام. most commonly in old age because they have very uh, long mesentery redundant. فيدل يعني مدندل هيك ماكو. زين. هسا وين وصلنا؟ هوزان. يلا هوزان. هوزان. This 47 year old have an increasing abdominal girth. Why? Ascites. Ascites. Good job. Excellent. He has an ascites. You can see all this is fluid, massive ascites, making his abdomen distended. And when you do, as a you go to the level of the ascites, yeah, hold back, just a bit. Then, so you can see the fluid here, okay, between the diaphragm and the liver. What are the causes of ascites? A lot. Anything can cause a circus. So, girth, circumference, بالضبط. العرض يعني. ال. هسا منو؟ أديب. أديب. What's wrong with this image? Okay. Okay. Perforated bowel? Do you see both sides of the wall? It's just gaseous distended bowel. However, this is what I'm not asking the. يعني, what is wrong here? يعني, you've seen this image. You should call the physician and tell him something. Doctor, there is this. What? Okay. بعد. Ascites. لا. اوكي اوكي اتفقنا انه باول ديستنشن وكذا هاي افتهمناها فري اير اوف ذا فري اير اي كانت سي اني فري اير ذيس ار نوت بوث وول اوف ذا باول باي اير ذيس باول اجينست باول اتس تو وولز ها هنا 
اوكي اوكي احنا احنا اتفقنا ذيس از باول ابستراكشن ام نوت ارجوينج وات اباوت ذيس تيوب ايوه رسعتي بعد سنتين ايش بيه تيوب ها يعني اذا صحيح كذي ماشي اديب ايش بيه تيوب اي ايش بيه It is not in a satisfactory position. It's in a very bad position. Tip of the NG tube, where should normally be? Should be at least 10 centimeter distal to the gastroesophageal junction. This is looping and going up. So this is a bad position of the NG tube. You need to call the doctor and tell him, reposition your tube. It is not good, okay? And by the way, if you open the YouTube, you can see two or three lectures about the doctor Dina, Dina Nasih, about the medical devices in radiology. And I strongly recommend that each and every one of you see it at least two or three times, because we see all kinds of medical devices, and we have no idea what are these. Will tubes, will lines, will catheters, will metal plates, will disc cages, and so we see them and we don't know how to write. There is a tube. What kind of a tube is that? It's all explained beautifully. She did a very good job with it. I strongly recommend that you see it because it's very important. Because in this case, uh, uh, the, the previous case, yeah. Dilated bowel. Dilated bowel. Smaller. But which one is more emergent? The NG tube position or the condition? How will you put the NG tube? So they, are, they know there is a, a bowel obstruction. And they put the NG tube trying to decompress it. Mm -hmm. yeah, the whole point of the x-ray is to check for NG tube position. Uh -huh. In this particular case, I mean. And this is all for the previous Yes. So... so They can, of course, do the same thing, but it's not always... So, this tube is in the stomach? When? This one or this one? This one is in the stomach. It's in the stomach, but it's coiling back into the esophagus. Okay? But still under the diaphragm. Okay, but it's not a good position to decompress bowel. You need to go distally, not proximally. Okay? So, welcome. Tip of the central venous catheter coil back on the right brachiocephalic vein. You can see this central venous catheter. If you take a good look at it, you can see it's back into, it's kinking. So it's a very bad position, okay? Uh, you can see this is a feeding tube that it's going into the trachea and to the right main bronchus, NG tube that's going into the trachea. That's also another bad position, okay? Another example of endotracheal tube that is going into, sorry, just a second. No, no, sorry, this endotracheal tube that's going into the right main bronchus causing the collapse of the lung, okay? I'm sorry. So, this is a swan guards catheter which is used for what? No. Blood pulmonary pressure monitoring. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and it lies too peripherally in the uh, descending pulmonary artery. It's been here. It should be more proximal. So everything has its satisfactory position. We as radiologists need to know what is the proper position of every tube, catheter, plate, uh, anything that we medically used, we need to know where is a good position and where is a bad position, okay? Now, uh, here, again, this patient has a chest tube. Where is it? It's in the skin. It's completely outside the hemi hemithorax. Again, a very bad position. Okay? Now, I know what it is. We have to. Okay. Where is Adib? Hello, Mr. Semino. Mariam. 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 
Child brought to the emergency department with multiple bruises. What is your diagnosis? Or most likely diagnosis? قاعدة بالemergency جابوا لي طفل multiple bruises. مزورك مثل ما نقول احنا. What do you suspect? And how can you prove it? What's your suspicion? Come on, it's an easy one. Hey, child with multiple bruises. What do you suspect? Leave the X-ray. What would you suspect? يعني ترى يوذنون انا من يمي 15 مره سمعتها. Child abuse. Okay. So, how to prove there is a child abuse? What are the signs in the chest? In general, what are the signs? Wait, wait, wait. Rib fractures. Scalp. Scapula. Okay. بس مو اي ريب فراكشر لازم ريب فراكشرز اوف ديفرنت ايجز سم ار نيو سم ار اولد اوكي لايك صار لايك هير يو كان سي ذير ار فراكشرز ذس از هيلينج وان ان ايفر هيلينج فراكشر سو ذس از هايلي سجستيف اوف تشايلد ابيوز اذر فيتشرز ذات يو لوك فور از Fractures of other bones, especially in the shaft and in the core. This metaphyseal fracture is very typical for child abuse. You see this corner fracture? It's very typical. Why it's very typical? Because they, the abuser twists the hand or the leg of the child, leading to this type of fracture. Okay? It's not accidental. Yes, come on. Okay? Again, you look for other signs, like for example, here, bilateral, subdural, or epidural hematoma. How the epidural or subdural? Epidural, exactly. Epidural goes with what? With arterial. With arterial, means there is a trauma. Okay? Epidural, معناها a fracture. Subdural, not necessarily. Okay? It's lens shaped and it does not cross fissure. يلا محمود an easy one لا دوقف خير من الله عدنا يا معود 72 year old with slurred speech why يعني if you miss this one I'll kill you هيماتوما where Where in the posterior cranial fossa? In the What's this is the cerebellum? In the brain stem. This is a brain stem hematoma or brain stem hemorrhage or bleeding or whatever. This is a fatal condition. It's in the brain stem. You can see there is a hemorrhage down this non contrast city. The contrast If you go into another uh, slice up, you can see this is intraparenchymal hematoma. This is inter intraventricular hematoma and the bleeding. Okay? So this you cannot miss. Tamar? You can most senior has most senior mal gadi or most senior. Yeah, so and the general figure moaku. But so I'm a full pitch for the case of high for yani. Yeah, be hard. Thirty-seven year uh hits. In the head with a brick. What's your diagnosis? Huh? What? Come on, you're a final. Give me the good juice. Hematoma and خلاص. What kind of hematoma? Which kind of hematoma is that? Intraparenchymal, subdural, subarachnoid. Epidural. And associated with what? Fracture. Fracture. 
like we just said, epidural bleeding is usually it's you it's on of our arterial origin associated with the trauma. It's high pressure bleeding because it's arterial, okay? And usually it is crescenting in shape and it does not cross fissures. Tama? Again, other example. Bihar, focus. What kind of hemorrhage is that? Good. What about that? This one. Good. This is the Pentagon sign. You can you see like a five-headed star. This is an intraparin uh, sub subarachnoid hemorrhage. Okay. What kind of hematoma is this? Intraventricular. What? Which ventricle? Third ventricle. Exactly. What kind of hematoma is this one? What subdural? Okay, subdural. What is special about this particular hematoma? Daqiqa, zamilatkum. Subacute, low acute and chronic. Acute and chronic. Why it's an acute and chronic? Because there is layering. This is dense blood and this is fluid. There is a fluid blood level, let's say. So it's chronic and now rebleed. Okay. So I think we finished all of you and we finished our time. We'll continue next time. We have like 20 more slides, 20 something slides. We'll finish them maybe next time, okay? Thank you everyone. Any questions?